Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's a little too wet to go work on a job today, so we're gonna do a little maintenance around the shop. Uh, my F-350 actually needs a oil change and fuel filters. It's been a little while since I did that, so we're gonna go ahead and take advantage of this wet day and get this changed out. Here's the oil filter I bought this morning from Ford. That's the part number. And this is a 2017 F-350 6.7 liter super shitty. And um, here's the fuel filter we're going to change out. That's the part number for that. That came directly from Ford. Here's the oil I'm going to use. Mobile Delvac 1 5W40. It's got a picture of an 18-wheeler on it, so uh, you know it's good stuff. Full synthetic. So, anyway, y'all stick around and let's get this oil changed and the fuel filter changed out. And go ahead and make a day of this. While it's wet. When it's wet, you can't work, you can't make no money. So we look forward to those dry days, but you gotta utilize the wet ones too. You can't just lay up and not do nothing. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And if you hadn't done so already, y'all go ahead and subscribe to the channel to keep up with all the new stuff. And you know, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. And anyway, thank y'all for watching. Now let's get to it. Okay, the engine oil drain plug is a 16 millimeter, in case you got one of these pieces of shits too. And you want to turn your ratchet to uh, loosey and not tidy. Let's see if I can get this broke loose. Not a weird angle. There we go. Now, let's spin this dude out without making a huge mess. <laughs> that's terrible well anyway at least we got these microfiber rags we don't use shop rags we use the good shit while that's draining we're gonna go ahead and try to get the oil filter off if you don't have one of these you need one it's a flow tool just an engine oil filter tool got it at track supply it works really good it's a good tool for what it's designed to do A lot of oil up above that filter in that housing which i just got through running the vehicle too so it can be expected i like to get as nasty as possible while i'm doing this kind of thing as you can tell, I like to make big messes and get as nasty as I can get. Just something about it. But anyway, let's let that finish draining. And we'll go ahead and go back here and remove the fuel filter. This is our fuel filter that's underneath. It's more of a water separator than a fuel filter, but it's your main filter. Uh, I guess it would be considered just the fuel filter and then your primary is located under the engine bay. But you've got this yellow tab right here. You go ahead and twist it lefty-loosey. Go ahead and drain what you got in there. Getting diesel all over my camera.
and it holds a good little bit. But you want to make sure you drain this out first. If not, you'll have a big mess by the time you get done. But like I said earlier, I love making messes. If I can make a mess with something, I'm going to do it. Okay, now the bolts that hold this thing in is eight millimeter. I believe there's six of them. And you can go ahead and undo your plug in here and get it back out of the way. Let's just tuck it up right here on the skid plate, but don't forget about it. These bolts have retainers on them, so they won't just fall all the way out. So you can go ahead and loosen them until they just hang. And we don't use power tools. We're trying to get arthritis, you know, like the old timers. We don't use anything that's going to save our hands because we're real men. And then there it is. That's your water separator, sensor, everything all in one little package. Let's get this thing out and get that new one installed. Okay, we got our fuel filter out. Let's unbox this new one. See what all we got. There's a new fuel filter. Came with a gasket. And then there's the piece I was telling you goes under the hood. We'll put that on here in just a little bit. Okay. Now we're gonna put this new gasket on too. Now we got to get this filter out of here. It just pops up. I know it seems kind of violent, but it does just pop up. Okay, we don't need this one anymore. Let's chunk it. Now we need to get our old gasket out. And remember what I said, I love making a mess, so that way you can see how not to make a mess. Maybe you can learn from what I do. And that's a big drain pan right off the side of the truck here. So y'all don't call the EPA on me. We're just going to kind of clean this dude out. Try to dry that up pretty good before you put your new gasket in there because uh, rubber and brake cleaner together combined will do some weird things. So you don't want that brake cleaner manipulating your gasket before you can install it. So just kind of make sure you don't have any standing liquid in there. The brake cleaner evaporates pretty quick. We can go ahead and tighten back up our valve here on the bottom okay we're ready for the new filter let's put our gasket in it's got a little groove here doesn't matter which way it goes just as long as you get it down in the groove get your groove on okay see there it's gonna stick up just a little bit 
new gaskets installed. Let's clean our hands. Let's get this new fuel filter on. And then this side up. So. And it just kind of sits in there and flops around, you know. It's a super shitty, so what do you expect? But anyway, let's get this dude back under the truck and bolt it up. Now put it in here just like it came out. Remember, get your little eight millimeter bolt started. You don't want to just start winching them down. You want to get them all pretty well started and a little snug before you start actually tightening anything with a wrench. Because if you don't, you might strip something out and that wouldn't be good. I like these little icon wrenches from Harbor Freight. This is a quarter inch drive and it's super nice. See, it's got an on and an off switch. So when you're putting your parts on, you flick this thing to on. When you're taking them off, you flick it to off. And I'm sure there's a torque spec for these little eight millimeter bolts, but uh, we're going to torque them down to what we like to call down here in the south, snug. So these bolts are going to be snug. Just want it just tight enough where it doesn't leak. You can kind of feel it when you hit that snug level. Basically, don't grill up on it. You know, we're humans. We're not gorillas. There's some things you have to grill up on, but eight millimeter bolts ain't one of them. Okay, that thing is snug. Let's put our plug in back on. Okay, rear fuel filter changed. And then here in a little bit, I'll show you how to prime this thing. But really all you do is cycle the key three or four times and uh, it'll just fill this up with fuel. And then when you start it, it's good to go. It's kind of self priming. You don't have to bleed anything. I do like the, I do like that part about the newer stuff. I don't like having to bleed nothing. Okay, let's get back up here and Put our engine oil filter back on and put the plug back in. Okay, now when you've got these upright oil filters like this, first things first, take it out and make sure you've got that seal. If you don't have that seal or something looks dirty, don't use it. Stick it back in the box like that. Now, you wanna take your oil here and you wanna fill this filter up. It takes a little bit. You have to let it soak into the media that's in the filter. But this keeps you from having a dry start. Try not to make a huge mess. All right. I think I made a pretty good sized mess. Put a little bit more in there. Okay. Let's put this on the truck. Okay. 
Okay, don't spare your oil on the way up. Get this filter spun back on here. Okay, it's real slimy, so I'm gonna have to put the wrench on it before it's over with. But now we're gonna put our drain plug back in too. Get your 16 millimeter. Turn your ratchet to tidy. And this probably has a torque spec too, but like I said, we're going to snug it. We don't want it too tight. Swipe our filter off a little bit. Because any oil you leave on this thing, as soon as you go down the road, it's going to get nasty. And I can't stand working on a nasty vehicle. get our little oil filter wrench and we're going to snug this thing up one time too. Typically like if you're working on a small car or something you don't uh, you don't want to do anything other than hand tight these filters but you know I mean the bigger filter you got the less you can do with your hands so just use common sense don't over tighten it. You just want to snug it up. All right, that one's good. Perfect. Okay, let's go top side. Finish this up. Okay, let's get some oil put in here. I like to use one of these, I call them big gulp funnels. <clears throat> Take your cap off. Let's get some of this brand new fresh oil down in this dude. I don't know about y'all, but it seems like every time I change the oil in something, it runs better. Same thing with washing it, you know. Oh. <clears throat> Screwed that up. It's a good thing they make this stuff called degreaser. And I got a water hose right here handy too, so we'll take care of that. This is an 18-wheeler jug, and I'm putting it in a one-ton truck, so that's that's the problem. This jug's designed for 18 wheelers. That's why I spilled it. That's why I spilled it again, just a little bit there. I believe this thing takes 13 quarts, but we're just gonna put a little, <laughs> a little oil in it and check it. Oh boy. <laughs> Dang, 18 wheeler jug. Alright, let's check that. Okay, I think it's good. Put the cap back in so oil oh, don't blow out everywhere when you start it up and make a big old mess. Now we gotta cycle this thing four times at least to uh, get that fuel filter back full. But oh wait, before we do that, let's change this one out under the hood, I almost forgot. Okay, now each one of these lines are 
just a little bit different the way they come off and that's so that way you don't install them in the wrong position because Ford thinks majority of people are idiots There we go. And then you spin this thing lefty loosey. And you'll kind of hit a little wall and you just wiggle it up. Keep it tilted on its back and it won't leak too bad. Here's our new one going in. One. Two. Three. Okay. Got that in. Now, let's start the truck up and cycle the key a few times and then we'll crank it, let it run for a minute, and then we'll recheck our oil. Okay, y'all, that's all it takes. She's running, she's happy. New filters, oh yeah. Let's check the engine oil, make sure it's good. Make sure you wipe this little poor ass dipstick off so you can tell what's going on. Big old truck with a poor ass dipstick. Well, we're halfway up the stick, so I think we're going to leave it alone for now. I'll drive it for a day or two, and then we'll recheck the oil again. Okay, so we got it done. It's full of oil. Filters are back full of fuel, so we're good to go. Ready to haul something else to the next job. Um, thank y'all for watching, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and uh, I'll get back with you as soon as possible. And I know I'm about to get some degreaser and get the water hose out and clean up this big old mess I made, and I guess we're going to call it a day. So, see y'all later.